Hello everyone, this is Ben, and in this video we're going to talk about all of the medical miracles that people use to explain the resurrection of Jesus, or, or really how they try to, what they're doing is attempting to explain the evidence that we have, the historical facts that we have, with an alternative theory or a hypothesis that like would be a medical miracle. So... So anyway, uh, there's basically three of them, you know, basically, and we're going to look at all three. One is like illusion theory or swoon theory, and and then the, the next one is hallucination theory, and the next one is delusion theory. So like, what are the difference between those there's three. An illusion is when you, like, say people look out in the water and they all see the Loch Ness Monster and it's, like, really a log. There's really something there that they're seeing, but they think it's a log. They think it's the Loch Ness Monster. So, like, the idea there would be that, like, they thought they saw the risen Jesus, but it was really somebody else. Um, so, uh, like, I heard a story from Haiti where this guy was supposedly raised from the dead as a zombie, but it was just a woman saw his brother at a distance. You know, that, that that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so we'll take a look at that. That's called swoon theory. It's the idea that Jesus just passed out, you know, and then woke up and they all thought he resurrected. Uh, that's long been rejected. It's pretty old, I think. Uh, no one's pushed that one in a long time. Hallucination theory was once really, really popular. Um, the uh, it's the idea that the the apostles of Jesus and and Paul and the other witnesses to the resurrection really did see something. Uh, what a hallucination is is when you literally see something that isn't there. So like or hear something. So like it's when there's something going on with your brain where, like, and we've probably all experienced it, you know, like where you felt something like a like a bug crawling on you and there's no bug. That's a tactile hallucination. You felt something that wasn't there. Or, like, you maybe you heard someone call your name, but no one called your name. That's an auditory, you know, hallucination. You heard something that wasn't there. So we've got five senses, and then there's, I think there's, like, six total because there's one more where pe people just call it a felt presence, which is like the most common. You just it just feels like there's somebody in the house tonight, you know, with me. You know? <laughs> like, like, uh, uh, so that's a hallucination theory. It's the idea that the apostles like hallucinated uh, Jesus back from the dead. It is not popular today. Um, it's been debunked. It, it died. It was a serious contender for. It was a serious argument that historians made about what what really happened that first Easter Sunday, like a hundred years ago. But nobody pushes it forward today. The consensus today is uh, that we don't know what happened, and we're going to look at like why that is, unless you're a Christian, and then you say the resurrection happened. You know, um, hallucination theory is still like the most popular theory. And people try to make a case for it, but no one really gets out there and like says, I'm going to defend it. It's rare. I mean, there is a, a German uh, historian named Gerd Ludemann who died in 2021 still defending it. Gerd Ludemann uh, was an atheist who, like, a German atheist historian who, like, he said his whole mission was to convince as many Christians as possible to stop being Christians with his hallucination theory, uh, his version of it. And his version was more of a combo theory, and that's the other thing we're going to take a look at. When I said delusion, what I meant is like group delusion. And it really ends up being a combo theory. We'll see why that is. But like, a group delusion is when, like, for example, in cult groups where they all commit suicide because they believe something that they have no evidence for, but they believe it so strongly that they're willing to commit suicide. So like, you know... All of these would explain the facts that we've talked about so far. Like, there are certain facts that are uncontested in history because of the evidence. Like, that the, the apostles were really willing to die for 
what they believed about Jesus and the resurrection. I saw one atheist online say, well, you know, that they basically were, you know, they were just con artists who were willing to take risks for their con job. It's kind of like, kind of like Joseph Smith, you know, but, and, and the founder of Mormonism, but that's not quite the same thing. Uh, it really boils down to how risky the situation is, you know, and how many times they face violent persecution over and over again. And, uh, ended up dying, and, and, and they could have easily saved their lives by just saying, oh, you know, I don't believe this, you know. Uh, it's clear that they really believed it. So anyway, um, you know, we talked about that in the other video, so we're not going to go back into that again. But it will be relevant to this video because the, the evidence, when it comes to the hallucinations, we, we have to sit back and say, okay, what did the disciples really believe they saw? when it comes to Jesus, and it's like, is this an audio, audio and video situation, or is this just a video situation? Is this an audio, video, and touch? You know? It's like there's a 0% chance of that in a middle-aged adult. You know, so we're going we're gonna to have to look at some probabilities as we go. But the first thing we need to look at is like the swoon theory, the idea that Jesus just passed out on the cross. So... Uh, the, you know, swoon theory. Okay. Um, the issue here is that the Romans would have had to, like, horribly botch the crucifixion. Like, how long was Jesus on the cross exactly? Given that we know he was crucified, like, how long was Jesus on the cross? You know, like, like every year there's people that get crucified uh, just for a little while, just so they can out of the devotion to Christ and so they can experience what Christ experienced for them, they get crucified. I saw a video of these guys doing it out in the Middle East. It's like, whoa, these guys got crucified. And they do stuff to make sure that they don't die, you know. So, like, there's all kind of stuff. And you don't stay up there very long, you know. Um, the, uh, but, I mean, honestly, what, what was he up there, like five minutes? I've heard some medical doctors say, like, if it was like 10, 15 minutes he was on the cross, then he would have had to have been nursed back to health. You know, and so it raises serious questions about, I mean, the disciples would have had to have been deluded to think that somebody they had to nurse back to health was, you know, risen from the dead never to die again. Because that's what the word resurrection means. Um, that's not, you know, that's not what they believe, like. They were unafraid to die. We'll look at the historical sources in a minute, but they were unafraid to die because of how Jesus had died and God raised him from the dead. And they wanted to imitate Christ's endurance and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, at any rate, that's why that theory doesn't do very well. Um, let me see if I wrote down anything else in the notes. But yeah, it's just... <laughs> We only have two archaeological finds of crucifixion graves, apparently. Um, so anyway, I mean, the problem with this theory is it becomes a medical miracle. Like, you know, okay, yeah, if Jesus was in the grave for 40 hours with all the blood drained out of his brain, that person's dead and doesn't come back. If he does, it's a miracle. But also, if he's like that and never dies in the first place that too would be a miracle you know like was jesus superman or something you know he just oh that was a hard knock i just passed out you know so again that's what we're talking about these these become like medical miracles okay so the next thing we need to look at is hallucinations and remember hallucination is when you like you like literally see hear taste smell touch you know something that actually is not there but you fully see it Okay, or, or whatever. All right, whatever sense it is. Okay, so hallucinations, basically there's three things that can cause it, just to kind of point this out. Um, you can have structural damage in your brain, like actual brain damage. Uh, common, most common thing that I heard of is strokes. Strokes cause it. There's also heat strokes. You can get brain cancer. You could probably get hit in the head really hard if it's hard enough. Um... 
All right, then you can have chemical imbalances in the brain. Uh, these can be brought on by a weird reaction to a drug or a hallucinogenic drug or it could be some other problem in your brain that is not caused by you know any drugs or anything but like your brain's just not working right. And then uh, mental illness or psychosis can bring this on. So like, you know, for example, I, I, what I read is like a person who is a narcissist can if they get exposed or, or they're in a crisis situation, can hallucinate. Um, like, narcissists are pathological liars who manipulate other people. They're deluded into this grandiose self-identity. So they have... A delusion is a fixed false belief. It's not necessarily the same thing as a hallucination. Because a lot of people who, ha who have hallucinations, like, say, through chemical imbalances, sometimes they go into a state of, like... You know, it's a problem where sometimes they give someone a drug, an elderly person in the hospital, and they go into a state called uh, delirium psychosis where they're having hallucinations like crazy. It used to be called acute brain failure. But it, you take away the drug that caused the problem, and then you give it like a week or so, and it runs its course, and they're back to normal. And they don't continue believing that the hallucinations were real. So that's not a delusion in that case. Um if you continue to believe the hallucination for the rest of your life, you would be deluded. But a delusion is a fixed false belief. Well, narcissistic individuals are people that are deluded in this grand self-identity, and they reinforce their delusion by manipulating other people to, like, uh, around them to reinforce it for them, to affirm it as true, and then they decide it's true. And, like, they're pathological liars a lot of times. But if they get exposed for this whole framework of, like, they're really a sham and not who they claim they are, they can, like, have, like, a mental breakdown and, and start to hallucinate. Is what I read. That is a thing. Another thing is people on alcohol, you know, like, it's a th I read one story where this guy, like, uh, the psychiatrist was called to the, to, they said there's something wrong with this inmate or this prisoner. He'd been in the jail for three days and he hadn't been drinking and apparently he, he was he was addicted to alcohol. And so the guy would walk up. He said he went there and they, the guy would walk up to his the concrete wall in his jail cell and just talk to people that weren't there. And then he would go like sit down on the bed and look at the other wall. Like, and there was a TV up there in his mind. And he would get up and change the channel and sit back down and watch that. And he was just completely that's i think that's called delirium tremens when somebody you know has that kind of hallucination and so at first glance it seems like hey that could explain uh you know the apostles they hallucinated like that and then they continued to believe it after it was over um and yada yada, yada. and that's that's how Christianity started and of course they believed it because they really saw it but it wasn't actually there because they hallucinated okay so what we need to do is uh, we need to take a look at this um, there's a couple other things there's something called conversion disorder that we we can look at very briefly it's just it's just a bad name <laughs> It, what it means is when you have some kind of subconscious tension that gets converted into a neurological symptom like blindness or inability to hear. So you're really upset about something deep down inside mentally, and then that gets converted into like blindness, for example. And there was one psychiatrist or psychologist, I don't know the difference between the terms, named Carl Jung, who proposed that that's what happened to Paul because, you know, Paul had blindness. Um... That is, it doesn't really explain, you know, really what's going on. It's not, it's not a hallucination. So that, you know, the, that's just part, that would be part of a combo theory. We'll take a look at combo theories later. Then there's bereavement hallucinations. Like senior adults who've been married for a long time are probably the most likely people in the world to experience hallucinations. So like, uh, marriage really, really messes with the brain, <laughs> 50% of such people have hallucinations and 14% of that of those are visual which means overall 
since only half of them have hallucinations at all, it means overall 17%, I mean, I'm not 17, but 7% of senior adults who've been recently bereaved experience visual hallucinations. But again, that's not a real good explanation. Yeah, yeah the, the, the disciples, we could think of them, they were really close to Jesus. They were married to Jesus, okay? You know, like it says, Mary Magdalene, you know, was one of the women that followed him around and, and used all of her money to support Christianity, you know? Uh, Peter and the apostles and James and John, they prop Peter, it was Peter and Andrew, his brother Andrew and James and John, says they left their, when they followed Jesus, they left their fishing boat with the hired workers in them. They probably had considerable wealth for back then to follow Jesus. And, you know, Jesus says, like later, you know, how hard it is for a rich man to get into the kingdom of God. It says they were amazed at him saying that because probably they or, you know, they had a, a good business going. I mean, they had hired hands working for them, um, at least in the case of those four. And they were amazed, and, you know, who then can be saved? You know, that, that, that kind of thing. Uh, the, uh, probably not educated, uh, but anyway, that's, that's another point for another time. Bereavement hallucinations are not known to be a group thing. So this doesn't fit the profile. Yeah, they were bereaved of Jesus. Jesus died, but like, that's not usually a group thing. People who experience these tend to, as far as we know, the profile of how these work, people always want to keep that private. It's very important and private to them. And there's no known example of a bereaved person on the basis of bereavement hallucination coming to believe that the dead person is back to life. Okay. There's no known examples of that. Um, the uh, much less resurrected. So like, as I've said multiple times in this video series, like resurrection is a specific word, you know, in the Greek that like means the end of death at the end of time. Like, so you're coming back from the dead to, to die no more. It means bodily, raised bodily. So, like, they had other words that they could have used in, in their vocabulary that the New Testament's written in if they wanted to say came back as a ghost or came back spiritually because that whole idea of coming back spiritually, as we see in the Greek world, and the New Testament's written in Greek, is, like, really popular. And so Christianity runs into... This is a problem for Christianity in the Greek world that it's a bodily resurrection. It becomes a problem. Because the Greeks, there is a prevailing view in the Greek world, or at least one of the big dominant views that thinks that's crazy. Um, because they, th they thought that the spiritual was superior to the physical. So why would you be physical? Um, so like, okay. Again, another problem with hallucinations, well, that, that we need to point out before we get going on this is like, uh, a hallucination does not explain an empty tomb. So, you know, the empty tomb is this whole other thing that you've got to explain. Like, they hallucinated. That doesn't explain why the tomb was empty. So you need to add in something else. So it always becomes a combo theory. And we'll talk about combo theories, you know, towards the end here. But, like, uh, what we need to do is take a look at, okay, all right, what kind of hallucinations would these be? What did the disciples of Jesus believe they saw, or you know, when, or what was what were the properties of the appearances of Jesus? I guess did they hear and talk to him, or did they just see him? Because the probabilities are different, um, and it's important for us to to just think about this stuff. Or did they even claim to see him, or did they, did they claim to see him in their minds? Did they claim to see him while they were dreaming or something? Okay. Uh, well, if you go with what the, the Gospels say, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, well, Mark doesn't actually talk about the appearances of Jesus. That little bit where he does at the end is probably added later. Mark just ends with the angels telling the women, Jesus is back from the dead, go tell everybody. Okay, and he doesn't include the appearances uh, because, as we'll see, that was a part that was the well-known part, you know. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, like, the appearances of Jesus was, like, it's, it's like the old saying, and the rest is history. You know, it's the rest is, like, the part that everybody knows, you know. Um, 
and we'll see why that is. We talk about you know the historical evidence that we have for these appearances, but I mean we could look at Matthew and Luke and John. You know, I mean you've got stuff like outrageous stuff like you know the women and here's Luke the women go to the tomb that Jesus appears to them he tells them to go tell the apostles they go tell the apostles the apostles decide that because they're women apparently because we know the context of how people trusted women that it's just nonsense okay and, and then Peter's the only one who's like I better go check on that tomb he goes back and it's empty and Peter's confused okay he went home wondering what happened, right? So then, there's these two apostles on the road to Emmaus. They're walking from Jerusalem to another town. And Jesus comes up and walks next to them, but they're like miraculously kept from recognizing him. He talks to them forever. They're walking and talking with Jesus and he explains to them, you know, what Christianity is and how it works. They didn't understand Christianity, the basics of the gospel of Jesus Christ and why he died for our sins. And, you know, how this fits in with the Old Testament, how he had to be raised. And uh, then he, Jesus wants to go on, but they're like, no, 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 uh, have supper with us. And he's like, okay. And, and then he prays over the bread, and then they're miraculously allowed to see that it's him. And they're like, it's Jesus. And then he vanishes. So then they're so excited that apparently they don't even eat the supper. And they run all the way back to Jerusalem, and they're, the, the apostles are all in the room there, the twelve. And they're like, y'all, Jesus is back. We just saw him. We were about to eat supper with him. And the, and the apostles like, we know, right? We know. He appeared to Peter. And that, and so like they believe when Peter said, but not when the women said it, you know. So then, uh, so then, uh, Jesus appears in the room with them. Okay, so like, this, and then, and then he's like, touch me and see that, like, uh, I am alive, you know, and, uh, they give him some fish, and he eats the fish, like, so that'd be, that would be, like, you know, that's like Santa Claus eating the cookie, I got, <laughs> like, so, like, here's the thing, that kind of hallucination where they see, hear, and touch him, given that they were middle-aged, and they probably were, you know, like, Peter and Paul died, you know, about 30 years later, um, they were middle-aged, okay, most people didn't live past 30 or around died around 30 back then unless you were rich and you lived a better life for a lot of reasons and you died in your 50s and 60s and then there was always a few people who lived to be 70s and 80s you know and they would be celebrities kind of like today if you lived to be 96 or 106 or whatever you're a celebrity today okay so um the what are the odds of that kind of hallucination zero that doesn't happen that's not a thing Okay, you don't see, hear, touch, you know, like, much less uh, everyone else experiencing the same hallucination. We're, we'll look at mass hallucinations. Mass hallucinations are a thing, but, like, they they are simply a component of group delusion. So, that's when everyone in the group is real excited and wanting to see something, and then they see something, but the details are different. The death is in the... In the details, when when a group of people sees something, you know, and they they're like in the like like uh, the details are different. Uh, it doesn't happen to a sad and defeated group, uh, and the details are different. Like but like the way it's described there in Luke, it's like that's not a hallucination. There's no way. So 